FC Barcelona may have lost this week, but the mobile world has won. Live from our last day at Mobile World <laughs> Congress, it's another very special episode of the Pocket Now Weekly, the once a week podcast from PocketNow.com where we discuss smartphones and tablets just like all those that just landed at Fira Europa just down the road. I'm your very tired host, Michael Fisher, and I'm joined by similarly tired. Managing Editor Anton Dinoj, both of us very full of tapas. Good afternoon to you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. And we are joined long distance once again by Editor-in-Chief Brandon Miniman, where the sun is up. Good afternoon to you. Good morning to you. Good whatever. What up? Yes. What up? We don't have... Uh, there are things that are different about this show today. First is that... Everything's we, different since we landed. Everything is so... <laughs> oh my god. Even though the show didn't pack nearly the amount of surprises and excitement we hoped... Um, it was still very exhausting, and we, we got a lot of stuff covered. Actually, we're uploading videos as we speak. Uh, they're, the last of our videos are going up on the Internet right now, so by the time this lands, uh, all of our videos from MWC will be up. But except one. Except for one, except our wrap-up, right? Yes, and then, yeah. and then we'll probably have the occasional bloopers because everybody knows me and camera don't mix well together. <laughs> That's not true. I think, you, I think you did the best host, hosting job of your career at this show. Well, thank you, sir. Yes. Yeah. And we will also So have... you, you guys... Yeah? yeah? Go ahead. All right, son of a gun. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, you guys, uh, you guys really got around, and I wanted to ask you, I wanted to start off by saying... After going to Mobile World Congress, there must be at least one device that you guys are excited to buy. <laughs> and I was just one I'm just wondering what that device might be for, for, for each of you. Well, I will let uh, I will let Tony go first, but I will ask you before he does, uh, are we confined to just one? Because I have two. Two's good. All right, Tony, you're good. Okay, so I would most definitely, as usual, every year would like to buy the pad phone. <laughs> but on, on the exact <laughs> same note, I will most definitely not end up buying not it bad. because of the uh, huge $1,300 price tag on that or, or the 1,000 euro price tag. So, yeah, that's a want, but probably a won't. You don't want to sell your car to get a pad phone 3? Mm, I haven't thought about that. Maybe, maybe now that you mention it, maybe. <laughs> and if I was to choose a number 2, I would be be going for the LG Optimus uh, G Pro. Right. Yeah, I'm having a strange bout of deja vu. It seems like we <laughs> sat on these very these very big beds uh, talking about this not not 24 hours ago. And not for one time only. Right. <laughs> yeah. We just had the Pocket Now Live hangout last night, everyone, and uh, we, we, we talked about a lot of this stuff, and we are glad to be bringing it to the weekly. So I'll answer the question. Um, on the tablet side, this should be no surprise to anyone who watched my hands-on with the Sony Xperia Tablet Z. Brandon, though, has not been here. He wasn't at the Hangout, so he doesn't know that this is the first time in my life I've ever wanted a Sony mobile product. Um, oh, my God. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. It's thin. It's light. It's waterproof. It's basically everything I want in a, in a tablet, with the exception of not having an, an app ecosystem. It's it's one it's one step closer to this future where tablets will be like these just surfaces you, you just pick up this surface and it has virtually no weight and there, virtually no depth yeah. and and the experience the, the 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 tablet Z is so close to that but there's one big problem which is that I think I think a lot of the world is kind of over this 10 inch tablet form factor and they kind of, and it's good to have choice but if they did this tablet in a seven inch I would have children with the tablet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I agree that I agree that I would love to see it in a seven-inch form factor as well. But having held it, and I, I don't know if you can tell this from the video, but when I, I pick it up and I pick it up with like the last inch of the side of the device in my fingertips, and even then, it is so light, it is unbelievable. It is I also can't believe how light it is. It is also probably yeah. too light for me. I mean, it's a matter of taste. I, I would find that to be too light. It's just what I thought of the S2 when I first saw it. I, it felt inconsistent. Well, you know me. You, yeah. know, you know, I hate the Galaxy, or I hated the Galaxy S3 when I first picked it up because I felt it was too light. It felt yeah. insubstantial. But the Sony device is built so well that it, it, it's light without feeling like, like crap. And that's one. It's so great that they... It's really tough to get that balance, light and high quality. It's one of the few times I think we've seen that in the mobile world. From 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 me at least, yeah, yeah. But but you're right. When you said it was too light for you, I just pictured you like reaching for it and like picking up and then like 
rocketing into the stratosphere. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Good thing there was a feather. <laughs> but the, uh, from a from a less impressive or a less established brand perspective, the thing I, I was excited most by is something else that Tony couldn't care less about: is the the Yota phone out of Moscow. Did mm. you see that video, Brandon? The one with the e-reader on the back. Yeah, not an e-reader. It's a it's a second display that <laughs> happens to be powered by e-ink, but it can be an e-reader if you want it to be. It can be whatever you want. But it it'll be. display anything. That's the beauty of it. Um, and so I was like, when I first rolled up in their booth, which by the way, w looked like a jail cell. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is that the, the picture of the futuristic jail cell? Yes. Yeah. That's I'm the, the one that I tweeted. Uh, yeah, it's a bizarre booth, but we rolled up in the booth and it's packed, right? And it was packed the that whole time. That booth was always packed. Yeah. yeah. Everyone wanted to see the Yota phone because everyone's so starved for something that's new. Right, after we saw the Note 8, we were like, okay. Even though, and this is something we have discussed, I mean, it's not that I don't like the Yoda phone. It's it's a good concept. I wouldn't find it useful in my day-to-day -day usage. I don't read uh, e-books on a phone. I don't use uh, airplane tickets or, or boarding passes on my phone. So it's, I don't map, I don't need navigation at all times on my phone. So it's, it probably depends on, on, on person. This, it does, and this is why you and I are a pretty good pair at a show like this, because you and I... You do all the things I don't. Exactly. We're the, ex <laughs> the finest example of opposite use cases ever, because yeah. I do everything you just mentioned. So, yeah. <laughs> um, probably the most compelling thing about that was, to me, is if you throw a map up on the on the e-ink display, and, of course, if the phone dies on your way to your destination, yeah, you just still got your map. Just, that, that's, that's good. Cool. And that's awesome, but the, the device, other than that, is full of compromises. I mean, the size and the weight, and I think it's, you know, we still dream about this this dual-mode screen, and we always think the new iPhone's going to have it or something, where you can, like, flip it into e-ink mode, and it's not on the other side, it's on the same side, but it's a two-mode screen. That would be really cool, I think. I mean, yeah, that would be a very versatile, very useful thing for someone who uh, either reads a lot or likes... Apple you know, adding another space. side switch... The mute switch joined by the new e ink switch. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was very refreshing to have that kind of stuff. What would you purchase right now? Good question. You've got uh, an angry commuter in the background there, or your ride is here. <laughs> uh, we've got, that was actually an ambulance, so yeah, you might have seen this last week, but if you didn't, this is special effects coming to you live from Barcelona. <laughs> yeah. So you have to put up with that. Uh, and when, when it's not the ambulance, it's our neighbor banging on the friggin' wall. Um, <laughs> so, Brandon, yeah, Brandon. If, if you to buy something from what it was announced here, only here, what would you buy? Well, I was, I was first going to say the Optimus G Pro, uh, just because I've been impressed with what LG has done recently. Um, and that 1080p screen on that larger, larger display, it seems like a Note Two, but the way it should be with a higher res yeah. display. But then, but then Michael said the tablet Z, and I was reminded of it. And I would get one, but then we we have the same problem with Android tablets. You're going to get the Xperia Tablet Z. It's going to have a crazy good screen. It's going to be so light that if you pick it up too quickly, it'll go into the stratosphere. Mm -hmm. It's got uh, really good build quality. But then you start downloading apps, and you're like, "Geez, this Twitter app is massive." Yeah. You know, this um, Facebook app. these the Facebook app. It's just ugh. And and that's still such a big problem, and we talk about this all the time. And it's there's no end in sight to the 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 crappy apps on Android tablets problem. And when you have a seven inch tablet, it's not as bad. It's like a big phone app. So I was privy for a con to a conversation at a major manufacturer recently, uh, and this manufacturer makes Android devices, and um, that was brought up, right? This this app problem on on ten inch tablets uh, on Android. And um, this manufacturer's attitude seemed to be, if we continue building 10-inch tablets, uh, if we flood the market with these things, developers will have no choice. That seemed to be the attitude. That, that so. And they are right up to a certain point. Yeah. I, I cannot go into details as, as per how much effort the developers need to support several uh, resolutions on several form factors, on several display modes, uh, but obviously too much. Mm. Because at the moment, aside from a couple of a handful of applications, it doesn't seem to look good. Yeah. Um, but there was other stuff. We saw a whole bunch of other stuff at the show. And, and I, what I was going to bring up about 15 minutes ago with, with, with our unconventional podcast discussion was that we're going sans outline today, listeners, because we are, um, 
We're just so dumb. Because we're cool and we're improvising. And we're hip and we're cowboys. <laughs> but we are also uh, it, we are also at the end of the show and there's so much to choose from. It's just a wonderful glut of, of, of product. Brandon, on a scale so, of 1 to 0, uh, from, from uh, 0 to 10, how disappointed were you about the Nokia event? Yeah. Um, you know, I was watching that interview with Stephen Elop on, on The Verge, and they clearly have a strategy. They want to, uh, you know, we, we don't really, as, as consumers are like high-end stuff and enthusiasts, we like like really high-end awesome hardware, but the truth is a lot of people cannot afford that. And so if you can get some of that Nokia, uh, Nokia Lumia 920 goodness in a product that's half the price, it's compelling to millions and millions of people. So they're, they're kind of doing what's right, and they're going to have a kick-ass Lumia 920 successor in the near future, and we'll be happy, but we're a little bit disappointed right now because they're, they're, they're doing something to make sure that their business grows. Mm. I think tactically it was probably wise. We were talking to somebody from another publication about this. I don't remember who, uh, about how we were somewhat disappointed, but at the same time, I think the Lumia 920 still has some legs on it. It still has a ways to go, whereas it, where if Lumia had an, if, if Nokia had announced this super pure view device, I think they would have shot themselves in the foot. Not necessarily. The Lumia 920 is a six month old device going seven. So it's it's about the time they update it. Of course, I understand that it, probably there will be a major Windows Phone 8 update sometime this summer towards autumn, and, and if if they do something, that's going to be the moment. Well, it's not a six-month-old device. It's like a three-month-old device. No. Yeah, it was launched in November. November, December, January, February. That's No, it was launched in October. <laughs> oh, hey, Brandon, can you figure this out for us? No. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, regardless, I think I think the nine twenty. I think they would have cannibalized nine twenty sales if they'd announced it now. And I think the nine twenty is still moving. Um, but we'll we'll see. I, I don't know. All I know is we were very disappointed. Or I, I in the moment, I was very disappointed. I think everybody was. Yeah. Um, when we stuck around. I'm a little tired of. I'm a little tired of the, not alphabet soup, but the number soup. I mean, you know, I, I officially cannot keep track of the 900, the 920, the 720, the 610, the 5. Can, can you can you do it in one breath? There's like five yeah, of them now. And then all the U.S. carrier variants, yeah. too. The 820, the 822, the 810. And then we've got uh, uh, the, the, and then the laser for Verizon has another number, which is totally not related to any of those. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, but anyway, you know, it was still a fun Nokia event. I found it to be uh, a good time. It was announced in September. It, it was released in November of 2012. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Tony, for listening. So we were both right. <laughs> can we talk about? Can, can we talk about the ASUS um, phone pad? I think you know. The, the question would be, which is, of course, the 7-inch tablet that can make calls, which Tony has gone on record by saying that he would use and such a. Yes. De- and now that you've seen it, Tony. Of the, this device that we always, you know, uh, hypothesize about, would you still you? Ha- or the better question is, how would you use it? Like, would you put it in your pocket? Yes. So, so the the main reason why at the moment I'm carrying both the tablet and the phone is that I'm more productive on the tablet. But of course, I need the phone to make phone calls. So it, it's double the bulk, double the uh, devices. If I had the device which offers me more productivity, which is in this case the tablet, and also had the opportunity to have phone calls, not via speaker or Bluetooth headset, but as with an earpiece, then I would cut it down to one device only. Now, I'm not sure if it will be the ASUS phone pad or the Note 8.0, but uh, the form factor and the concept, this is the way I'd use it. Wow. Yeah, it, like, it, I think what, what we came down to last <clears throat> night in the, in the Pagano Live discussion was basically like, why not have the feature? I mean, in the US, I think Samsung told us that more likely than not, that earpiece is going to be removed from the Note 8.0 in, yeah, in their version. Depends. I don't know what from ASUS the carriers is going to do. Yeah. yeah. But, so, but why? Uh, the same reason why you couldn't make a phone call on the uh, Galaxy Tab 7.7, which also had yeah. an earpiece. But but why do they take that away? Because you probably you probably need a uh, you will consume both data and voice on that, and the carrier probably only wants you to consume yeah. data. Right, the carrier probably doesn't want to because they don't acknowledge that as a phone. Right. Yeah, it's it's a it's a carrier mandated thing that probably has to do with their preferences one way or the other. But so it doesn't hurt to have it there. I just besides the earpiece, my problem with the phone pad is I don't understand how it. I don't understand why why anyone's excited about it. It's an XS7 with removable memory and a back and a and a um an aluminum back and a slower processor because it's the Intel twenty four whatever which is the Lexington, Lexington chip. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so it's cheap, so right, but it's still not as cheap as the Nexus, and it doesn't run, it's not an Nexus device, you don't get the latest Google experience, and the Nexus 7 is already made by Asus. So is this is this Asus trying to stay competitive as they... I think this is, this is what the Nexus 7 should have been. Really? With the slower processor? Not necessarily not? with the processor, but with the earpiece and, and the design and the looks of it. Oh, I see. I see. I don't agree. I, I like I like the Nexus Seven much better than this device aesthetically. I don't. Yeah. See, with the, we did this in our comparison video. You can throw around the Nexus Seven a little bit and not worry about that thing. I think you said you're know, you talking about the pad phone, but the, with the aluminum back, you were like, and this can probably get stra- scratched easily. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Brandon. What would you would you consider the the, the Asus f- phone pad? For your I can't personal? put that. I can't put that in my pocket. I sit down and like my pocket busts open. Yeah. So you wouldn't use it as your as your daily driver as a, for a phone. No, I, yeah. I I don't I don't see how it could ever work. Where I mean, you have your one phone number and it's on your phone and that's what you carry a lot. I mean, it's unless you could like duplicate your SIM card and have calls come in on your tablet well, if you happen no, to be using it. I mean, that'd be cool. You're thinking of it wrong. You need to remove your SIM from your daily driver phone and make your phone pad your daily driver. That's yeah. the way it's supposed to be. And just think of it. It's basically a super giant phone. And imagine the battery life on that phone. I mean, it's, you'll have a phone. With a ba- with a tablet battery. All right, for me, the minute I put that thing up to my head and had a conversation on it, I think I would I would immediately put it on eBay <laughs> because I couldn't I would not be able to deal with holding that 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 lunch tray up to my face. That's my only thing. I think it's the least ergonomic situation possible. And I, it doesn't I, really feel good against your face. Now, did you do? Did, did we take a picture of you with the with the thing up against? No, your... I'm no, I'm showing it off on, that, on every hangout possible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. You, you know what I'm excited about, and uh, I was hoping that this would be the case, and at Mobile World Congress is definitely happening. Is that this year, thanks to a certain Apple device, will be the year of the metal phone, the metal device, aluminum. So you're thinking one, you're thinking pad phone, you're thinking, uh, what else did we have? Aluminum only. Or pad and, and uh, yeah. HTC One. Do you think that, okay, let me follow up with a question right now. Do you think the S4 will be anything uh, but plastic or would it be aluminum? Let, let's be straight. Oh. <laughs> it, it, that's funny. Um, if they... If they do aluminum, I think they will be chastised for for that because um, that's not their style. I, I think it's going to be plastic. What but do you guys think? Yeah, I think they got. Well, we've been talking about this all week, and like with the release of the Note Eight looking a whole lot like the existing you know design language, uh, we don't see them changing that for the Galaxy Four. That, but don't forget the Note Eight is a phone which is a gap filler for a family which is more characterized by last year. So that family starts with the S3, continues with the Note 10.1, the S3 Mini, the, the Note, Note 2, 2, and then the Note 8.0. And I'm guessing that starting March 14, there will be a new cycle, and I'm hoping for a new design cycle, which will end up with the S4, Note 3, S4 Mini, and oh, if, if so on. If we're talking hopes, uh, I'm right with uh, right there with you. If we're talking expectations, I think Samsung has grown. I think Samsung is going to be timid this year. I think the Galaxy S4 is going to be underwhelming, physically speaking. That's a very good point. And, and public service announcement, Michael and I will be in New York on March 14th to bring you Galaxy S4 coverage. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Huzzah! Um, that's you know that's that's such a good point about having to uh, be safe this year because Samsung is in a very very comfortable spot. In fact, Google thinks it's so comfortable that they need to do something about it. Right. You know this, and and so like Samsung doesn't have to come out with all guns firing with some innovative crazy new stuff. They just need to iterate because the Galaxy S3 is still a really good phone. It's got awesome brand recognition. Everyone still wants it and they just need to make it a little bit better. They're in a they're kind of in an Apple position, right? Like with the with the 4S and probably with the 5S, you know. Yeah, I think that's what I'm worried about here is that yeah, I, I'm worried too. Yeah, I think that the I I liked the direction that Samsung went with the S3, even though it was kind of it was a little schizophrenic, and they um they they didn't really pull off the polished river stone thing, um but at oh, least it was oh. something different. I found it to be refreshing because it was different. I don't see them doing that this well, year. Michael and I have been discussing or debating exactly this while while on the show floor yesterday. Uh, by the way, I got the chance to take a look at the HTC One. 
Yes. And, yeah, uh, what do you think? Uh, I, I like the phone. It's no doubt about it. It's a great phone. And I took a test picture in the usual badly illuminated HTC booth of Michael. <laughs> And, uh, and Zoe's good, but Zoe's a gimmick. You either love it or hate it, or you probably use it for like a week and disable it. That's that's something different. But the picture I took, I wasn't sold on it. I mean, I, I've seen lots, lots, lots of pixels, and it was jagged. So, so, down, so it was it wasn't clear. It was it pixelated. Was not at all. It was not uh, it was not that dim. I mean, at that uh, at that light level, I was expecting more. Of course, I, I cannot draw a conclusion based on that. So this was the lead-in. Michael and I were just talking. If the rumors are true, and the Galaxy S4 will not have an Exynos processor, but the same Snapdragon 600 running on the HTC One, then the resolution will be a 1080p resolution, just like on the One, and the specs will be approximately the same. It will all come down to two things. One, the camera, which will probably be a 30 megapixel camera on the S4 versus the 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera on the HTC One, and the design. And that's just going to be a that's just going to be a dagger in the face of HTC, who's trying to do this megapixels don't matter crap. I think uh, that I completely agree with you, Tony. It's going to come down to largely in large parts of the camera, but also importantly how the how each company positions the device in the market and how they advertise. Yeah. If yeah. HTC is not, if HTC brings the same lackluster push they did with the One series compared to Samsung's all-out assault, uh, it won't be very good. And by the way, group parachuting. Can I, right, but listen, I, I will tell you this. I will take a million group parachuting commercials over anything that Samsung has put on my TV recently. These stupid commercials with like the guys with the unicorn game, and then like <laughs> they they even managed to make Seth Rogen and and what and what's his face unfunny Paul Rudd. I mean, I like those guys and I hate them in these commercials. Like the Samsung commercials are horrible, but the, they're always around. There are so many of them that you can't help but see they spend them so much on advertising. Exactly, yeah. and HTC can't match that. I mean, right? I, I haven't looked at their books. I can't say that with any. Degree. I think I think that they're going to. I mean, they, that was the difference between. Uh, previous year successes and 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 last year where they were so quiet and they had you know some ads for the for the one x and they just weren't good uh, don't forget also guys that the s4 is probably going to have this octa-core processor it depends on who who you listen to or who you read there are several rumors some some of them say there's going to be the octo, uh, octo processor some of them say it's going to be a faster iteration of a quad core processor from from samsung and exynos and some say they're going to go with a snapdragon 600 so mm, gonna, I don't think they're, they're going to do that. They're going to stay with their own silicon. And once again, this is going to take. This is going to come down to messaging as well. If Samsung can make an octa-core processor meaningful to the common to the public, that's going to be a real win. But the, then again, the let's let's just speculate on that. What does octa-core mean for the masses right now? Nothing. I think it means exactly what quad-core meant back in the day when it was not supported by Android. Octa-core is not supported by Android as right. we speak. <laughs> yeah. And just one sentence, and I'm going to end it up on this. Adding to the two differentiating things, the design and the camera Michael mentioned yesterday, and he was right that we have Sense 5.0 and we're probably going to see a new touch whiz on the S4, so it, it will be probably a third category of differentiation between the two devices. And what do you think they're going to do with touch whiz? I think that they have no choice but to pretty it up. I mean, it, it's really... Cartoonish. Right, and and we didn't mind that so Cart much when Nature UX first came out because it it's was so responsive. One year ago. And it was a, but it was a year ago, and now it's it's just it hasn't aged well, in my opinion. Do you agree, Brandon, or do or not? I never really liked it to begin with. They had this whole nature theme, you know, as you alluded to, with the you know, it feels like a pebble in your hand, the device itself, and then they introduced TouchWiz, which had or Nature UX, which tried to make you feel. I, I don't really remember. They, they they tried to say that it would make you feel relaxed or at humans. ease. Yeah, you know, for humans. humans. Oh, remember that. Remember that they had that advertising campaign in the beginning, and then they pulled it because I don't think anyone knew what the hell they were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think that is entirely true. No, I think I think they will change the theme. The, they have a one year cycle in which they shove shove every device, its design and touch with. And I think we're looking ahead forward to the March fourteenth event as a new cycle with a new design and a new touch with. And the theme will be not designed for humans, but for monkeys. I don't know something else. If it's designed for. <laughs> if it doesn't happen with the Galaxy S4 unveil, then we're going to have to wait for another year because it is the smartphone group within Samsung that pushes TouchWiz forward. And it's basically the S4 which starts it off. Yeah, it's the, the S the device. S, the S yeah. of the year, yeah. Uh, so it's not going to be like the Galaxy Camera 2 is not going to be what's going to pioneer <laughs> yeah. the new TouchWiz. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, we'll, we'll we'll have to see. It was amazing though to walk past Samsung's like acre-sized booth and realize there's <laughs> oh nothing God. in there we wanted. To I see. was I was actually walking up to a Samsung representative and just to be on the safe side, I, I was asking them, "Is there any other device, any new device which you are showing off here, which is not the Note 8.0, maybe an Ace Free, a Geo 5, something?" And she was like, "No." And that super huge Samsung booth was still full. And they only had the Note 8.0 as a new device on display. They had lots of devices, but only the Note 8.0 was new. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, they have a huge buzz buzz around them, and that's good. And that's it, good is, it's, it is good for them. Yeah. And you know, and I don't mean to say we weren't interested in stopping by because our products aren't interesting. They just we just didn't want to stop by because they didn't have anything that we hadn't already covered. Yeah. Um, and before we could jump off of Samsung, and I do want to talk about this very briefly. We uh, we. We can talk about this, right? The, micro, the Microsoft uh, thing? Uh, uh, yeah. 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 So, you got to talk. It, 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 no, <laughs> they, they didn't offer any official comment on this, but we were at a Microsoft event last night. Um, and it was not, there were no announcements or anything like that. A we were just, mixer. it was a mixer, yes. And it was lovely. They hosted us for some cocktails and we got to talk to some Microsoft folks and it was very nice. But they had about mm, 40 Windows Phone devices on the floor uh, yeah. that you could just play with. They only, had HTC 8X. Only by HTC, not the S. And then they even had a Huawei. They had a Huawei W1 on the floor. And I'm looking <laughs> around. I want to show Tony the, the Ativ S. And it ain't there. And not only is the Ativ Odyssey not there, which is an American device, and I don't understand if that's not there, but the Ativ S is not. Samsung is not represented at all on the floor to the point where... The we're, heck? Yeah. Yeah, and when, when we asked about it, he said that there's no particular reason why it, it, it is not here. So if you want to see it, maybe I can find a colleague who can show you his personal one, but it's, it's, not, it's not here. But we, it's, not, it's nothing we can tell you about that it's bad. And you know what I just realized? Even on the Windows 8 side, there were no Samsung products. There was no ATF yeah, yeah, smart yeah, yeah, PC. Yeah, yeah. So why? What are you guys trying to say? I'm just... It, I, I don't know if it actually says anything or not. I'm sure it doesn't say anything significant, but it is... I think it's interesting that there were no Samsung products on the floor of this Windows Phone and Windows Focus. Today. Well, I'm, I'm going to say something, but not directly. I'm going to reiterate what I said previously, that Samsung, Samsung, Samsung doesn't, doesn't really care about Windows Phone because the majority of their products and their income comes from Android. So this might be a passing back of the ball that Microsoft is slowly trying to uh, not push them out, but uh, let's say build a buzz around Nokia, which is their child, and uh, HTC. They're using every lever that they have uh, to, to, to control the market. Um, can we talk a, a, uh, just a little bit more about this, the, the Note 8.0? Um, because I want to know who this device is for. You guys have felt it. You put it up to your face. You put it in your pants or whatever you've done with it. And, and like, you know, I'm sitting there thinking the, uh, you know, you got the Nexus 7, which is like a, such an all-around great tablet. And then you've got devices like the, um, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, what's that? Uh, for the phone pad? Yeah, you've got the phone pad, and then you've got, you know, the uh, heavyweight, the uh, Asus Transformer uh, Infinity. Um, and then... The pad phone like, Infinity, yeah. Yeah, what me, is what is this eight eight inch thing like? What is a wh who would buy that? Let me let me tell you before Michael jumps in. Uh, the Note eight point zero is for me and for people like me who want to have a unified device all at all times. Now you can throw in or take away the S Pen uh, uh, thing. You might use it all the time like Michael does, or you might never get it out of the phone like I do. It's not about the S Pen. It's about the fact that it's made by Samsung. It's running smoothly, it has some additional features, and it has an earpiece. Now, the S Pen for me doesn't really matter, but for Michael, it's, it's a must. Yeah, you know, I think the Note 8 is for people who wanted the Note 10.1 to be something that felt a little more finished. Um, and, mm, interesting. and who don't want to carry around a 10 inch tablet yeah. they want a smaller more portable tablet that still retains the S Pen and all that additional functionality and uh, as a matter of fact and doesn't just kind of throw it on there uh, the S Pen on the Note 8 also function it offers additional functionality in that it actually works the buttons on the finally device. right which is in yeah. the first place yeah and that seems like a minor thing but Samsung is really paying attention to the S Pen they're they're courting developers to build apps to take advantage of the S Pen are any is are there any third party apps that are noteworthy yeah, or is it not really Flipboard Flipboard, Flipboard does oh, this, yeah <clears throat> yes you can so what is Flip 
Oh, it you you hover and it shows so you, you can, some information. You can use the yeah. AirView uh, aside from built-in applications, and the developers will be able to use APIs to implement AirView in their applications. Whenever you hover over with your S Pen, then it will either expand or show you something, so you'll be able to action without touch. Mm -hmm. And which. Yep. Every time you hover uh, in the calendar, it's a pain to me. I will be honest. Some of these features really suck. Uh, when you hover, AirView is not good for everything, but I use AirView so much to scroll on a page. You just hover the S Pen over the bottom of your page, and your browser just scrolls for you. I mean, it, it's, it's so nice. And uh, I, I think that there's a reason why this is the Galaxy Note 8.0 and not the 7.0 or the 7. Point whatever. I think that since the iPad Mini is a 7.9 inch device, there must be some marketing thought, back thought here. So mm. we got a slightly larger but still higher PPI screen than you do. And, of course, uh, they got the S Pen. I, that, that resolution, I mean, I, I don't know what it is. I guess, I guess consumers don't really – it doesn't really matter to them because, like, when I see this 1280 by 800 thing happen over and over and over again, it's like let's push things forward a little bit. Like let's not see pixels. Yeah, but aside from you and I and the geeks who are listening to this show, nobody seems to care. I mean, I, people are buying iPad yeah, minis. Yeah, absolutely. So you definitely, it burns your eyes, and I can understand where you're coming from. I can also see them, but I can neglect them, and I can, can learn to live with them. But your average Joe and Jane don't really care about that. I mean, it's but it's it's kind of like a broadband internet. Like when you have 56K, you're like, oh, this is fast enough, or maybe you didn't. And then you got broadband, and then you're like, I can't live without this. Kind of like you know when you when you're using a Retina iPad, you're like, I would never want to use a non-Retina iPad again. Yeah, I think people just need to have a taste of amazing clarity, and then they would want it. And and because of what we do, we constantly see new stuff, and we switch our devices off. Now, if we wouldn't work in this domain, and we would be stuck probably with a, a tablet for like one and a half years, you don't get the chance to play with another competitor and see that there is a better option. And then, again, all the rest is just numbers. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I have another remark about Samsung, and then I want to talk about something else. Um, <laughs> The, the, the cool thing in my mind about the 8-inch form factor is that it's getting closer, but it's still far away from this like idea of a digital notebook for people that like to write stuff down. Oh, because yeah. the, note, the, note, uh, the Note 2 and the Note 1 are it's just a little too small because you're, you're, the size of your palm is like the size of the screen. And then the 10.1 is not portable. But the 8 <laughs> like, is almost there. And did you guys find that to be the case? Like, was it very comfortable writing or...? All right, Here, here's the thing. I, I can't speak to writing because we didn't have a time to do a lot of writing on the Note 8 uh, when, we were, when we were filming our demos. But uh, holding the thing, they made a big deal about saying that holding it, they, they wanted it to feel like you were holding your notepad, your journalist notepad, your diary or whatever, and it felt great to me. Brendan, uh, you have an iPad mini. If you yeah. hold the iPad mini in your left hand and the Note 8.0 in your right hand, you can't tell the difference. Is that light? Yeah. Wow. It's good. It's yeah, light. yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's... You know, uh, uh, the f it, it, the feel, the look, do, do not inspire me. The size and weight do. Yeah. That, that's the but best maybe way. That's probably that's psychological experience. because you probably are fed up with this design. I mean, you you've seen the S3, you've seen the Note 2, and and probably you as you reach the point where you say this is enough. But let's yeah. say that's your first Samsung device, your first contact with this. With is this. this your first Samsung device and something so light? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'll it'll sell. It'll move. It, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But it doesn't. It, it. I would not. I would say it'll sell. I would say it will satisfy. Will it inspire people? No. Like, certainly not in the way that Samsung wants them to be inspired with their whole like creative talk. I like that thought process. Sell, satisfy, inspire. It's like a checkbox. Yeah. Bunch of yeah. Right. Because I think I think that that third point, uh, inspiration. Depend um, heavily factors into repeat purchases, right? I'm I'm much more likely to buy again from a company that has inspired me than I am from a company that I've said, yeah, their product is good. Yeah. And before yeah. we wrap up the Samsung talk, I have just uh, an adjacent uh, question to you mm -hmm. guys, or an announcement to make with the Galaxy Note 8.0. The line between phones, tablets, and tablets has officially disappeared. <laughs> Did you notice that? We got four, five inches, six inches, seven inches, eight inches, nine inches, ten inches, eleven inches. There's no line anymore. It's. I mean, you can still categorize them, but yeah, there's no like. Well, there, I, I would say the line is still there. The gap is not. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have phones, you, then you have phablets, and then you have 
tablets with phone functionality, and then okay, there's a there's those? a huge blur. Uh, what do we call these things? Phone blitz. Oh oh god! Wait a second. Is this is this that? No. Well, I've wrote about the phone blip, but I don't remember what it was. Really <laughs> uh, well, that was that media. Yeah, that media but, but it's it's a phone blip. Yeah, it's we have a tablet and a phone blip. No, but a phone blip. I don't know. There's got to be a better name for it. Well, I'm excited to um, to import one of these from from Europe, and uh, maybe one of us can do an experiment to see. I if will we... do the experiment because I will definitely keep it as my daily driver because I'm the earpiece <laughs> fanboy on a seven slash eight inch form factor. <laughs> if anybody, t- if anybody, if Tony doesn't get hands on with this thing, it's going to be a crime because this is exactly his product. We are going to, but uh, listeners, we are definitely going to get um, a, a review device. So watch, watch for that. Um, yeah, let's let's move on from Samsung. Did you have a have a preference? Because we got a whole list of things we've seen, I, but not much. I, go on. I then. do. Oh, what, what was it? No, go, go, on, ahead, go on. Go ahead. I do have a preference. I want to know what the heck is going on with HP. And um, after we get done making fun of their tablet, their first tablet, I want to know if there, if you guys got any any indication that like this is just them dipping their toe in the pond, and they're going to come out with some badass, awesome tablets soon i must i must be completely honest when we were at the event where the hp was showing this off we did not get an opportunity to talk in depth because we were still we were rushing to film a number of videos in a very short amount of time uh because we didn't have much time at this event so we weren't able to get any any insights uh except for the fact that in my view the people representing hp at this event were were very nice and very knowledgeable um there, there was very little excitement on the team there uh, to show this thing off. Also, we have to mention that this was not a dedicated HP event, but it was a get-together of yeah, several of other companies, so that probably could have added to this stuff. I would like to say that I am probably the only one on the team who is not disappointed or not have a sour taste in his mouth about this uh, HP Android tablet. I mean, you guys, I know what you guys think. It's it's like last year specifications, and it just doesn't sound right. I mean, I'm giving them, first of all, the benefit of the doubt because it's their first try and their first attempt at something, and they are trying to keep the costs down while, and this was emphasized, bringing better quality uh, materials than the competitors. Now, we've got like, that... Uh, and this is- Go ahead. What's uh, the bezel made of? Uh, the, the the frame is stainless steel. Yeah, and the back is is soft that the touch soft touch rubber. thing is. They emphasize on this that it, this feels better, and it, of course for me it feels better than the Nexus Seven. But if you come to think of it, the specifications are not that good. But uh, it, it, it's not just that they're not that good. Let me let me speak to this real quick. I mean, I, you know, I, if you're going to put a, a five megapixel camera on the back of the tablet, fine. It's a three megapixel d- d- camera. It is something from two years ago or, or three, uh, right? And, and tablet cameras are useless. But the thing is, I'm not willing to give HP the benefit of the doubt because I've done that, right? And it's not their first attempt at a tablet. They, they, they tried um, with something that had far more potential and which was released in a completely unfinished condition, and then they. I gave mean, up. not not at the tablet, at the, at the Android tablet. At an Android, Android tablet, yeah. yeah. So, but, but, but I, I, and so, if it is going to be their first try at an Android tablet, why wouldn't they? Want let me to tell you why. The because they are it's not something amazing. Because they are not Google, who can sign a contract with ASUS to deliver super super low price devices. And about the only way you can cut prices down and be competitive against the ASUS Nexus Seven is to cut down on the specifications. Replace a five megapixel with a three megapixel. Replace a Tegra with a Lexington, sure. and and make that uh, that move. And whether the market likes it or not, it's gonna be that's another question. But they tried. Obviously, they had the price point in mind here. Right, and they cut every single corner they possibly could to get to that point. And I, in my opinion, they released a tablet that is more forgettable than almost anything else I saw at the show. When this was a company, first of all, that like helped found the computer revolution. And second of all, which which had something in its hands that w- truly could have been amazing and could have been and, the next platform. And it's just funny because it's coming out in April. Yeah, <laughs> that's not even the thing is a joke on so many levels that I am boggle. It boggles my mind that this is the same company that creates a, a be- as beautiful a product as the NVX two. Um, you want to hear something funny? I went to their website because I wanted to see the message. You know, <laughs> these companies have gotten really good at setting up these like microsites with nice graphics and big pictures, right. and they always have a message at the top of like, "Why should I care?" And their message for the Slate Seven is two words: experience amazing. <laughs> but the, thi- the the cool thing is that right under that they put the price, starting at one sixty nine, which is really cheap, and then. Um, 
there's a little paragraph about why it's interesting. But like they're they're uh, I kind of agree with Tony a little bit. I kind of agree with you too, Michael. But I agree with Tony that you know they're they're entering, they're, they're doing something that they. There's an opportunity here at at this price point because right now people that want a cheap Android tablet they go with Kobe they go with Arcos they go with those cheap like ninety nine dollar tablets that you see your grandma using and struggling with and they all are they're not even terrible they're unusable they're so slow they're so bad and maybe like this Slate Seven is going to be crappy in April when it comes out but for one hundred and sixty nine bucks if you only have one hundred and seventy bucks to spend like maybe this is a good option. It, uh, but but the, but the Nexus Seven is so close, thirty dollars more. Right, for thirty dollars more, you get the Nexus Seven with like community like, advantages that Google can communicate to you, right? Which is like fast software updates, a better display to my eye. But to be fair, oh, yeah. we don't know how HP will do will deal with the software updates. I mean, we we don't have any history of. Well, uh, we know it won't be as fast as the Nexus Seven. Though. The Nexus Seven is is sometimes slow. My Nexus Seven is still not updated to four point one point two, and it's a Nexus Seven, and it's a white one at that. So. Hey, that's my Nexus 7, buddy. Yeah, that's yours, and I wanted to give it back to you. <laughs> I've been missing... Set it back with my... No, I'm just kidding. I kind of want it back right now. Why isn't yours? I've had 4.2 for months for, on my Nexus 7. 4.2.2. Uh, oh, the... 4.2.2. Oh, I think... Well, you the said latest. 4.1. I'm sorry, the latest. So we don't have any history of, of Android history with HP. Maybe they'll no. be... I mean, I mean, maybe they'll be the first ones to update. Who knows? Maybe they will suck. I will say, I will say that, that the company has absolutely... No history of following through in mobile. I don't see that changing. And when I saw said that somebody else on the team had written an editorial about HP sucking, I think it was Jaime, right? Uh, with Jaime, this product. Yeah, Jaime. Uh, of course it was Jaime. <laughs> uh, I was disappointed because I wanted to be the one to write the editorial. You guys are just slapping push, myself on pushing the head. down the drowning men back in the pool. It, they, they, and they've done it to themselves, <laughs> and I, I just don't care. I, you know, I, I, they've done it to themselves, and I have no, no sympathy for them. Uh, let's talk about a company that, that actually means something. And I want to talk about the LG Optimus G Pro just for a second. Can I? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, and, and we I should mention we should mention that the Optimus G Pro is not the successor to the Optimus G. No, it's not. The Optimus G Pro is the uh, answer to the Galaxy Note 2, and in, in many respects, is uh, LG is upping the ante. So the G Pro at the moment is a better option for a phablet than the Note 2 is. But <laughs> but there's the S Pen. So I've been recently using my, my the, the Note 2 as my daily driver, and uh, the G Pro is better in almost every aspect if you count the higher megapixel camera, the better screen. I, f I even think it, it feels better and it appeals more to me. Uh, if I stop here, then it's a no-brainer. It's the LG Optimus G Pro. You're talking about the spec sheet. Yeah. yeah, but if I take into equation the S Pen, which I don't care about really, but Michael does and probably many others, then then there's that. Because on the G Pro, you can just use your finger as a stylus and that you, we know what that means. And if you're used to using the S Pen and the entire package with which it comes, the all the S applications, then uh, the the Note 2 is still is still, is still there. There. L let me speak to that for for one second. And uh, but after Brian, I feel like Brandon, go ahead. <laughs> well, I was I was gonna ask I was gonna ask the how, how's the, the the back has that that glass thing, right? No, the back is plastic exactly. So if you uh, rub your your finger against the back of the S3 or the Note 2, you get the exact same feeling when you rub your finger against the back of the Jeep Pro. It's the same plastic. It's pr it, probably even the same technology, but uh, they have the same. Uh, texture which you'll see on the Nexus 4 it, it just plays nicely and lights and it reflects and it squares and it's uh, and Michael says it's like a, it's like a like a cheap tile bathroom floor in a motel you never want to go to oh my gosh that's my worst nightmare on, on the white one on the, on the yeah, white one but no, we haven't the seen one. the black we one we haven't one. seen the black one the yeah. black one might be beautiful I just think the white one looks like crap and this this we have also we have to say this that these devices which were on the show floor at LG were the South Korean devices which also had the antenna for TV and radio reception they probably might bring the global version in other colors or yeah. other colors too and I will say on the software side it's not just that the S, it's not just the S Pen that the Note 2 brings to the game that makes it a better phablet in my opinion it's, it's Samsung's uh, optimization of, of TouchWiz to suit the larger form factor. Um, you know, the multi-screen is a better way of multitasking, in my opinion, than the resizable window approach that LG does. Um, the, there are more customizations. There but are more there's features. a limitation. In the Galaxy Note 2, if you have the multi-window uh, update, which I'm currently not running, you can only stack up two applications at one time. 
as with the cube slide on the LG, you can have like five or six applications, like back in the day of Windows 3.1, when it, they were right. stacked one above the other with different transparencies, and you can just move them around right. like it was a Windows so, PC. So you can do more on, on a screen with not enough real estate to make that experience worthwhile. So yeah, you can run six things at once and show your friends, but it's not a good wor you, like workflow. Well, it depends. You can have a small calculator on the left, you can have a small notepad on the right, and then your Twitter up largely on, on the... It, it all depends on how you're planning on using it. Yeah, and on something like a tablet, that makes sense to me. But uh, like, not on. on a Come thing. on, five point so five inches, man! It's <laughs> huge. I think here's the thing, and, I, uh, and we've, uh, you know what? After this is great because after we talk about this here on the podcast, we can take like a whole weekend of not arguing about this. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the Optimus G Pro, um, <coughs> I think it is the finest example of copycatting without understanding why you're copycatting. And I think it is a, a product that um, has no reason to exist. Well, there's one thing here that we're forgetting, which is that if Samsung is sticking to its yearly release cycle, we're not going to see the Note 3 until the summer. So until now LG has until, this... Until, until autumn, even, on, in EVA, right. beginning of September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so LG has this huge window of time, and, and Samsung's not going to accelerate uh, their, their Note 3 development just because of the G Pro. So LG has this huge window of time to convince people that this thing is better, and what are they going to do? They're probably going to say that the screen is much better. They're going to say... Um, the camera is better. The processor is faster. Probably yeah. They will, they will harp on those. And by the way, we, we didn't take any shots with the Optimus G Pro camera. No, it no, might be no. a total POS. It's just probably higher resolution. Not. Because the Note 2, as you said earlier, the Note 2 camera is quite good. It's, it's among the best cameras, yeah, yeah I've, I've ever used. But the, it's as it's as good as the, uh, the Galaxy. It's the same camera as the Galaxy. Yeah, same, and same the one. iPhone 4s yeah, and the Ativas and the 4s, yeah. So what I what I want to say is that the Optimus G Pro is by no means an iteration of the Optimus G, but I think that the Optimus G Pro is what uh, um, what resulted after the LG Optimus View and View 2 evolved. Ooh, please don't say that curse word. Now, I will say, remember, remember, we were on the floor at LG, and the guy's like, uh, we were asking about the, the tablet, and he's like, oh, we've got the Optimus View. Did you see that? The, yeah, last like, year. Yeah, and the like, View 2, yeah, also yeah, last he's year. He's like, oh, we got the View 2 now. We're like, yeah, we, we, don't, we don't want to see that. So I think that this, the, the G Pro, is the, the View evolved, and probably what the View should have been. And if you guys so much better. This, this finger, I don't know, noting or, or writing or something, that, that was introduced with the view and the software side of it hasn't changed. Maybe it has been uh, upgraded to a better experience, but I don't see it as copycatting a Samsung. They, no. they just brought up, uh, and just one sentence and I'm going to end this, they just brought up a large screen sized phone which happens to be able to get some note input from your finger like every other phone in their lineup at MVC. Yeah. Which is a yeah, which is a horrible feature when you use it with your finger. Yeah, especially on a three-inch something device. Oh uh, yeah, which we did. I, I'm sorry, Brendan. Yeah, I was just gonna say the the, the G Pro screen, um, besides being super high resolution, from the pictures and videos I've seen, looks very good quality, good viewing yeah. angles, good color and saturation. I, is it? I can testify to that. Yes, it's yeah. one of the best screens. Yes, which holds true with our experience in the LG Optimus G, which yes. had a wonderful screen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep, playing with mine right now. Yeah. Um, so, if we, if we can, I would like to talk about what we saw today. Yes, please. Uh, which, Brandon, the video is probably live. I don't know when was the last time you looked at our at our site, but um, we the dual screen. The oh no, we did, oh uh, sailfish. The sailfish, yeah. So we got our opportunity to to play with uh, Yola's sailfish OS, uh, which is still running on a developer device. It's a Nokia M nine fifty. Yep. Um, and and actually, uh, CTO newly promoted CTO. Uh, Stefano Moscone gave us a nice interview, told us a little bit about the direction they're going, talked a little bit about the SDK they just released, but we got to see this OS running in person for the first time, and I think we can say it's it's a very beautiful OS. Yeah, I am excited too. So if right, I just st uh, said this to Michael, if I am to choose right now between any platform, which is a recent startup, I'd use Yola over Ubuntu, maybe mm -hmm. Yola over Tizen, so, yeah, I, I think they're heading into the right direction. They are doing things completely differently from everybody else. And it's either the novelty of things or it's probably the beauty of the things which is appealing. But it is appealing. I've got a few questions about, about Sailfish. Um, I've been watching Ubuntu very, Ubuntu very closely. And that is 
easily, easily ported to legacy hardware. And not that you would want to do that right now because it's so early and so half baked. But does this is like what is the is this Linux based? It's Linux. Yeah, it's yes, Linux. it's Linux, and it will it will run native Android applications. It will run native Android apps. Yes. yes. What? Yeah, it's it's kind of a situation like the like the BlackBerry or uh, the oh. Ten. Um, it's an emulator. Hopefully, well, it's but it's not quite an emulator. It's it's more like a. Uh, it's you know, like, when, when I code. said it right, and when I said in the interview, like, oh, okay, so people will be able to port Android apps. He was like, no, there's no porting required. You just run the Android apps right on the true, device. True. How do you do that? You got to get Google Play on there. You'll probably find a way around to get the APKs. Yeah. So, so what is their plan to to get this into the world? So when we, oh, you mean like launching it, they're going to launch it with, they are going to have a device. They are designing a piece of hardware that will carry forth the uh, visual language of the OS into, into the hardware world. So they are going to release hardware of their own. They are also planning on licensing it to other manufacturers. I don't know who they're talking to, if anybody. And they are, they have not ruled out the possibility, I think, of offering this for download for existing hardware. So, so... They they would would did they talk about like providing instructions and and knowledge they based resources on they, doing no, that? they didn't go into the, you know I think there's the company we have to keep in mind Yola is is sixty people strong I mean this is a very small very very small company and I think they have to stay razor focused on one thing at a time and right now that seems to be from the impressions that I got uh, that seems to be the the piece of hardware they haven't announced yet the smartphone so. I think we'll have to wait to see that before we hear concrete responses on on the future. And of course, with with like with every other company, they have the separate divisions. One of which is working on the user experience. One of which is working on the aspect and looks of the uh, platform itself. One of them is working probably on hardware support. And mm. whenever these uh, separate divisions reach their final target, their final point of development, then we'll join everything together and probably we'll see the end result. Interesting. Now, having seen it in person and, and used it, and, and erasing the fact that uh, there's some novelty involved here, is this an operating system that you guys could use as uh, on a daily driver? Today, no. I mean, in its current, well, it's pre-production. So, yeah, today, no. Yeah, well, once it's once it's polished and, and it's working. I could give it a try, like I gave Symbian a try, Symbian Bell or, or Nokia N9 running on Mego, so I don't see why not, especially if you'll be able to run a native Android applications, even if it's going to be emulated, you have access to the world's largest or second largest app store, so that's not going to be a problem. So it's just like a new interface, you have to learn it, and it depends on the learning curve. The more I think about it now, and having seen it in person, the more I think that Sailfish looks like an OS that if you put it on a Virtu, if you put it on a really high-end piece of hardware, it would look beautiful. Because so much of Sailfish is focused on the aesthetic, the visual appeal. Um, it, to the point, Brandon, where it, you know the ambiance thing, where you can select a, a wallpaper and like if it's like a wallpaper with a lot of leaves on it, it'll change the entire OS palette to greens. So it's really pretty. It's gorgeous. And if you take a, it, actually, we took a picture of me in the video, and then we made an, a Michael Fisher ambiance. So the whole thing was this kind of ridiculous sweaty flesh tone. So just to, just to explain <laughs> how this works, uh, if those of you who are running uh, uh, iTunes 11 know this, with the, iTunes does it with the uh, album covers, the software itself is checking for a color which is mostly present or omnipresent within the picture which you are setting as an ambience, and then it changes your text accordingly just to make a contrast or readable, but still keeping it in sync with the visual guidelines. Yeah, not just text, but like highlight color. Yes, yeah, the whole, yes, yeah. the theme. So, so that's cool. So yes, I think it's very pretty. And um, just to answer your question, Brandon, I, if the app situation, if they, by the way, they're offering a native SDK too, and which, which they announced today. So yes, you can code Sailfish apps. And I, I think 20 minutes after they released the SDK, the 40-line like 40, the, the, the 40 code? Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> like the gallery app is like 40, 40 lines of code, that's it. So What's that mean? It's, it's is that elegant. good? Apparently it's very elegant. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't yeah. take very long to code apps for this platform. And, and uh, the camera app is also nice. 20 minutes after they released the SDK, they have their first app, uh, which was a podcast app. Like, it wasn't like Pong or something, you know. Um, so uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, 
You start asking questions about this, though, and you start thinking, it's like, is there room now for a, what, for a fourth platform, for a fifth platform? We don't know. Well, there, there certainly is room, and we are always supporting newcomers. The question is that, uh, as we said it yesterday on the podcast, unfortunately, Windows Phone is still struggling for that third spot, and it's not at all secure. So at, at one point, when you don't even reach 5%, you cannot consider yourself a solid third competitor. So I think that the game is on for the third option. What you, oh, we said yesterday on the, on the Hangout. On the, on the Hangout, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. So anyway, yeah, that's it, it was, I think overall, it was really fun. To it was fun, see. absolutely. It was and fun. watching this new platform run on a piece of hardware that was three years old and yeah. run smoothly. That, 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 that piece of hardware is standing at the base of Nokia's current smartphone design language. That's the predecessor of the Nokia N9, and the N9 was basically the final final version of the Nokia Lumia 800 and then so on. Why don't we talk a little bit about Huawei and the Ascend P2? Sure, go ahead. I liked that phone. You did? I mean, aside from the fact that it doesn't have a 1080p screen. I'm trying to remember. It's... I I don't need a 1080p screen on a 4 point something inch screen. The 30 megapixel camera, we took the samples, I shot you with the Huawei P2 and you oh, shot me with that. Right. We established that it's it's a mediocre camera. Right. At, at first glance, the, the, uh, the, the images looked good, but when we blow up the entire size of, uh, of the image on the computer, you could see some noise, even in well-lit situations. And then there's the Emotion UI, which... I find to be good, but it's a strange combination of other competitors' it's, options. It pretty much defines cartoony. Yeah, but all in yeah. all, the piece it, it, the the piece of hardware feels good in the hand, and the 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 software experience is fluid. It is it is fluid software. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. I remember the day. I remember covering it. I don't remember what it feels like. I don't remember what it looks like. I have to look it up. That's that, that's that's because it was one of those videos when Michael Fisher was behind the camera and not Tony behind the camera. <laughs> so I, I'm excited about the Hua, the the uh, the S and P two, and I think they they might manage to uh, to do something with that. But we had a little bit of dilemma. We wanted to shoot a comparison video, and we didn't really know what to shoot it against. Yeah, because of the specs. I mean, shoot it against the S3. I mean, that's a, almost a one-year-old fo- phone. Shoot it against uh, other p- competitors. I'm not sure. What do you think, Brandon, about the SMP2? I I can't think of anything that would make me want to use one or buy one. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Boom. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah. I, I uh, yeah. I was thoroughly underwhelmed. I was hoping to see their W2 smartphone, but the, this mid-range Android phone is like sweet. It's a mid-range Android phone. I bet you're excited about the LG Optimus L3 too. Oh, yeah. That little palm-sized box of cards. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, you know, there was actually another another brand I wanted to talk to before we left. Um, and Brandon, of course, will ask for your f- thing. But we also did just get back from the ZTE thing. the uh, or No, the NEC thing. The uh, the Kyocera Echo uh, <laughs> Resurrection. The, uh, the Media W. Uh, and I think that video is up now too. It should be up. It should be up. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that thing on film probably looks like total garbage. Poop maybe. face. Yeah. <laughs> but if when you hold it, you, it's not until you hold it that you realize that it's not it's not the Kyocera Echo at all. It's a much thinner, much lighter, much more modern device that folds differently. It doesn't have a hinge that requires thirty nine patents because it's so convoluted, the thing actually folds yeah. closed like a book with the displays on the outs, each display on the outside, front and back, which has a whole bunch of disadvantages to it, but one of the advantages it does is if you fold it at 90 degrees and put it on a table, you can throw the same video on both screens. So yeah. if you're sitting across the table from each other, you can be watching the same thing, which True. is pretty oh. cool. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. But ultimately, it's still got a big old bezel running down the center of the screen. Yeah. Mode and yeah. So <laughs> until they manage to do something with that bezel and join them, okay, I can live with one or two millimeters, but not two or three millimeters on each side, which adds up to six. And I see yeah. a picture, and there's a huge bar in the middle, and that's a deal breaker for me. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that was, I think, our last video we shot here, or our second last video we shot here at MWC. And it was nice to sort of end on a product that wasn't just another iterative slab, a uh, rectangle. You know, is somebody doing something different? We always love to see that. What about the ZTE phablet? I don't remember it either. Oh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember the one that. with the 3D esque 
the, the dual mode home screen with the 3D or the flat uh, oh, uh, yeah right the one where you could be mildly repulsed by the UI or fully repulsed by but the you have you have given to it that it had a great display the display was wonderful uh, and 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 that's bad. that's just about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't want to give the thing too much bunk. Uh, this is the ZTE um, memo, Grand Memo. Grand Memo. Yeah. You know, I, Brandon remembers handling the um, the Grand, not the Grand King S, but the Grand S at CES, probably right. Yep. Yep. And I think, I mean, Brandon, you were you you were kind of halfsies on it. I think you were excited about it in the moment, and then afterwards you were like, "Who's going to buy this?" Right. It's rough around the edges. Yeah, and that's kind of what I felt about the Grand Memo. I, you know, it, it was another, for me, if you're going to bring a phablet to market, I need to know why you're, why you're doing it, and I need to know what you t- added utility it brings me besides a huge screen. I didn't see it with this one. Well, the, the phablet concept by itself is not about the S Pen. I think you're associating the phablet with the S Pen. I'm right? not. I'm, I'm associating the phablet with, I, I'm saying if you're going to build something the size of a phablet, you have to have items like the S Pen, but not the S Pen by itself. No. You need to build more into the it. The way I see it, the phablet is just a device between a tablet and, and the phone. It's just a larger screen device. That's what I call a phablet. No, then it's just a smartphone. That's the Droid DNA. I mean, to, to me, the, a, a five inch you know screen. Yeah, but we're talking close to six now, 5.5 or sure. and, and that. So I think that that's the phablet. I think if you put a six inch screen on something or a 5.5 inch screen on something, if you want to get just, if you want to get me to buy What it, makes a phablet a phablet? It, it, functionality that I cannot find on a smartphone. I disagree. <laughs> well, then what's the need for another category? I mean, what, why is it, why do you have minivans and then large cars? Like, why don't you just... That buy analogy it? doesn't live here. I think that the phablet is that exact segment of the market which is filling in, which was at that point filling in the blanks between the four inches of the time and the 10 inches or the seven inches of the time. And that category was named phablets. 4.8 plus but 7 minus. What do you think, Brandon? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, an arg- it's a philosophical argument that is, uh, at its core, um, boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I'm so tired, let's, of, I'm let, just so tired let's, of seeing seeing huge phones for no reason. The, let's, the, the uh, memo has no reason to exist. Go ahead, Brandon. We should we should end on an interesting note. Let's can we please yeah let's let's talk about something that's not. I mean, the aside from out. the fact that I'm flying out like in a couple of minutes. Yeah, we got to run. Uh, what, what do you have something in mind, Brandon? No. Okay, let me. I'm looking at my my thing here and what <laughs> I'm looking at my notes here and. Brandon, would you buy a phone purely because the screen is not protected by a gorilla glass but a sapphire glass, which is more expensive than the gorilla glass, but it's basically indestructible. Um, I think that would be a nice a nice feature because uh, you know I'm looking at my iPhone screen, which has a girl of glass and some space age stuff going on, and it's scratched up. And any phone that I use on a on a daily basis, and, and screen protectors are even worse than cases. I you ever see someone with a with a phone and they have a screen protector and like the edges are peeling up, you yeah. can see dust on. Yeah. You're, you're like yeah. you're like this is the worst experience you could possibly have. Just take it off. Take off the screen protector and be a little more careful. Um, but why? Is there a phone coming out with a sapphire crystal screen? No, we actually, screen? there's another video which should be up by the end of this podcast where we uh, have visited a company which is located in Boston, which is currently producing some uh, neat zephyr mm. screens or glass. Uh, no, zephyr is not glass. So zephyr slabs of protection for certain electronics and they are very much liking the idea or would like the idea of entering the smartphone slash tablet world in approximately two or three years. Right. And just to be clear, this is not a protective screen protector. This this would replace Gorilla Glass yes. in the or production option, line. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And we so we saw a cool demo on the video which yeah. involved uh, scratching up a lot of glass with some concrete and then trying to do the same thing on Sapphire and uh, it's a little harder to tell in the video because our lighting wasn't wasn't the best. But I'm standing like three inches away from the thing, and I'm like, "Wow, you're really like your dude's putting his weight on this concrete going into the sapphire, and sapphire just wouldn't refuse to scratch." And Gorilla Glass Two, it was not the third iteration, the newest one, but the second one got scratched really easily. Yeah, yeah, and it's informative, so everybody should check it out. You should check out the video. Yeah, it, it is really cool. And we talked to this gentleman about maybe visiting his uh, company, considering I live literally 30 minutes away in Boston. 
Um, That'd be awesome. It would. But anyway, so that was interesting. And there was so much interesting stuff here at, at MWC, even though uh, the device avalanche that we didn't really expect ultimately never materialized. So um, there was a lot to see. I think we got to put a lot of it on film for our listeners, uh, for our readers, for our watchers. And, you know, it was a really, really fun time. And It was. It was, it was. There was a lot of stuff that was shown off. Tony and I, uh, by the way, and, and I should have said this while we were talking about Samsung, have been a walking Samsung commercial yeah. this entire <laughs> show. Because when we're not, like, beaming photos to each other on our Galaxy Notes... We are. Um, we were like, oh, what's your apartment look like? So we're like talking about our home life, and we're like dr- using S memo to draw doodles of our like hometowns and like, you know, <laughs> office oh. layouts and stuff. Like yeah, that. but usually in the, uh, in the subway when we were traveling, we were just sharing images by uh, a quote of myself bumping our phones together using the uh, S S beam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every time I, I envision every time we sent a picture, it was like a ching. Yeah. Yeah, it was like yeah, more and more Samsung money going in our pockets, of course. Yeah. Samsung fanboys so in Barcelona. Yeah. So it was a good time, and we hope that it was. Uh, it appeared to be a uh, a good and an exciting time from your perspective, Brandon. Yeah, it was uh, very interesting to see lots and lots of videos, and um, I think it's 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 becoming more clear and more clear and more clear that. Um, the big guys are holding off uh, on announcements until they can control the situation more and do a New York City event or a London event. MWC yes. will not die, but I've been covering MWC for quite some time now, but I'm seeing it going slowly, slowly south. I mean, HTC was missing this year, Samsung was missing this year, who knows, maybe even LG will be missing next year, and that, that will leave us with Huawei, ZTE, yeah. and the startups. Right, and those, I mean, HTC and Samsung were present, but there was nothing crazy coming out. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I expected HTC to bring something, well, Mid-range. they didn't. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see, I mean, but as you say, you have to get on a plane. Brandon, you have business to attend to, and I need to go buy souvenirs for my loved ones. Oh. Yeah. So, That's nice uh, I think we, yeah, I think we should we should wrap it up. Listener mail, sorry guys, we haven't even looked at the listener mailbox. It's yeah, just we'll going to be yeah. you know? <laughs> um, But this is a special edition podcast, so I hope you will you will forgive us. And uh, I think uh, Brandon, if you do not have any closing thoughts, then I will take us right out. Do not have closing thoughts. Great. Cool. Well, it was lovely to hear your voice, but. Uh, that, uh, that is, that is going to do it for this episode, special episode of the Pocket Now Weekly. Hey, everyone, find us on Twitter, because we finally got Tony active on it. Anton is at Yay. Anton D. Nodge, A-N-T-O-N-D-N-A-G-Y. Brandon is at Brandon Miniman. As always, you can find me at Captain Two Phones. You can also follow Pocket Now officially at Pocket Now Tweets on Twitter, as Pocket Now on Facebook, which Anton manages with a plum, and Google Plus. <laughs> Uh, at Pocket Now again. You can leave us a review on iTunes or Xbox Music if you like the podcast. And if you have a topic, question, or suggestion for the podcast, or you just want to say hi, you can email us at podcast at pocketnow.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Adios. Bye.